And back to our weird animals. But you know, the problem with the hammerhead shark along Florida's coast isn't so much that they're weird or even feared, but rather disappeared, or at least nearly. Scientists are doing their best to protect this severely depleted species, but they have to find them first. Two boats, 10 researchers, one goal. We're looking for great hammerheads, and they're, they're somewhat elusive. Hammerhead sharks live in warm coastal waters. They can grow up to six meters long, but only if they survive. This is a species that has been severely depleted by overfishing over the last 30 years. Some studies suggest as much as 90% or more. These scientists want to protect Florida's hammerheads. To do that, they need to uncover some important information. There's a lot of questions about um, where the great hammerheads are actually uh, giving birth to their young. So that's partly what we're looking for, to see if we can find those young to get an idea of where they might be pupping and breeding. If the team can pinpoint where hammerheads are giving birth, they can help protect those waters. Today's search starts in the Gulf of Mexico, just south of Fort Myers. This is an area that the fishermen tell us is a concentrated area for little hammerheads. So if they're here, we hope to find them. This kind of gear we call a drum line. Uh, it's, uh, it's designed to really maximize the survivorship of the animal. The objective is to catch hammerheads, tag them, then release them. If a shark gets caught, the long line gives it plenty of room to swim. They bait five hooks. And an hour later, it's time to see what they've caught. Lines one, two, and three all come up empty. Line four. We have bait on. Has seen some action. Something's been chewing on it. No. Oh. Line five. Bite off. Is a smoking gun. We got sharks out here. For six hours, they set the lines and check the lines. There's no sign of a hammerhead. A storm is now rolling in. It mimics the mood on board. El Skunko. If hammerheads are here, they've eluded them. It's back to firm ground. Well, we went out where the fishermen say they catch little great hammerheads from time to time, and we got skunked. Any number of reasons might explain why no sharks were caught. It could have been the tide, or the area may be too developed. Or it could have been just plain bad luck. Today, they're exploring the 10,000 Islands area. It's a wilder habitat with no human development in sight. We in? We're in. All right, let's get ready for the long line, all right? The mission remains the same, to figure out where hammerheads are giving birth so that the species can be protected. Roger that, we're picking up our first one. We got something on. It's a pretty big one. And a pretty mad one. All right, stretch them out. There we go. All right, so we have a lemon shark. It is a female. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're basically going to take four measurements. It's right not there. a hammerhead, but for these researchers, all shark info is valuable. OK, take it out, buddy. There you go. Good job, guys. Let's get this repaired, and let's get this thing redeployed so we can catch another shark. And catch another shark, they do. Nurse sharks, bull sharks, even bonnet heads. They're using the drum line and a new piece of gear. It's called a long line. The intent of this is to actually put a lot of bait and water in a very confined space. Our long line's about uh, 800, 1,000 uh, meters long, and on it we can get about 50 hooks. This line gives sharks less room to swim, but it does put more bait in the water. Bull shark! Let's uh, drag it around this side, guys. All right, we got an immature male. That's a two on the release. What we do is we give ratings to the animals uh, on the release. One being uh, exceptional, very healthy. Five being, unfortunately, uh, deceased. We got a hammerhead. Excellent. We got to move quick, guys. She doesn't look very, very good. Come on, honey. Crap. She's not doing well at all. 
fact, she's dead. This is the worst case scenario. In an effort to save this species, they've lost one. Yes, ma'am. They bring her up on board to gather data, then they resume the search. Uh, hammerheads, as we uh, just recently saw, um, can, um, can die on the line. And, and that's an unfortunate um, result for what we're trying to do. Our goal is really to capture these animals alive and tag and release them. It's the first field season of this study. Eight hammerheads have been caught, six survived, and they are all juveniles. We're just starting out in this research. Um, this is, we're at the alpha level surveying right now, uh, trying to figure out where the hotspots are for, the, for this particular species. Early results show the 10,000 Islands area is a hotspot. Seven of the eight hammerheads captured came from these waters. There is something about this area whether it's the pristine conditions, the lack of human interaction, the, the proximity of the, the Florida Everglades right to our south, um, could be the reasons why hammerheads are actually coming to this area because they are less harassed. As more evidence is collected, the picture of where hammerheads give birth will become clearer. And the ultimate goal is to have those nursery waters legally protected. We know they're there, we know that the females are, are reproducing and giving birth in this area. Uh, it's up to us to figure out exactly which habitats. So we're gonna keep working up and down the coast and uh, fill in the gaps of what we know about this species.